hey, I didn't see you there. Welcome to our apartment. What's that you got there? This thing's so heavy. <laughs> oh, just, you know, my, my casual apartment loungewear. Okay, I'm just gonna pretend like all of our flake is in the camera. Hey, this is our apartment. Yay. Should we let you in again? Yeah. Should we let's... let you guys in? Welcome, flight crew. Welcome to our apartment. You guys have been asking to see what our apartment's like, so today is that vlog. You're gonna notice something about our apartment. We have a lot of posters up, because my job is, I'm a poster designer. When you first come into the apartment, you'll notice this really cool Drew Struzan Back to the Future piece. This is one spot that is specifically for Ashley. He literally bought me that right when we moved in together, and I knew exactly what it was for. Yeah. Because he knew the house was gonna be full of movie posters. So I'm gonna be like, oh, you have a movie poster up too, it's okay. <laughs> So clever. Happy to have this cool piece up to remind us, oh my god, we're late for work! This one is pretty cool. I art directed this poster. One of the pinnacle achievements of my career that I got to work on. So when you first come into the apartment, you're gonna notice this really cool kind of atomic age style mirror. One of my favorite photos of Ashley and I on our first dapper day together. She oh, was yeah. magical, spinning around behind the castle. Love that shot. Okay, my favorite part of the kitchen is just making coffee. I'm really happy that Brian loves coffee just as much as I do. So I love our little coffee station right here. We got the ladies, coffee, and the little canisters that are really cute. I think here it tastes like garbage. I love our Smeg coffee maker because it's very like atomic looking and I love the teal. The other part that goes with the coffee maker, our coffee mug collection. And that was another great thing we discovered when we were first dating. You like really geeky coffee mugs? Yep. Me too, I have a collection too. All mine are from Disneyland. Every time we have to, we want to buy a coffee mug at Disneyland, we have to really debate about it. We both love our morning coffee. If you guys follow our Instagram, you'll know, like we always check in with you guys while we're having our coffee. Mm -hmm. And it's just a very, it's like our kind of time of the day together. Yeah. It's our morning together. Like we're like, oh, we've been, we've been asleep this whole time. I've missed you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Sit together and have a cup of coffee and catch up. Yeah. How was your dream? Oh, yeah. We picked this up at um, uh, Wonderland. Wait, un Wonder? Wonderground. We picked this piece of our last trip to Disneyland. We thought it kind of looked like us at Dapper Day. It, yeah, it reminded me of Ashley and I sitting having milkshakes when we were at the uh, Flo's Cafe. Mm -hmm, Flo's in Cafe. Cars Land. Yeah. This is how we normally have it lit because I have some sensory sensitivity. So bright lights and fluorescent lights really yeah. freak me out. <laughs> so that's how we usually have it. This is our kitty cat clock, our kit cat clock. But yeah, you just set it to 10.04. It's the time that we go back, back to the future. This way, <laughs> come to our living room. Welcome. So this is where we spend most of the time, as you guys can tell if you follow us on Instagram or just watch our ramblings that we have on Always Believe. Here's the couch. Here it is in full glory. This is where we usually sit for breakfast and for dinner and sometimes for lunch. Right below here, we have some pieces that you guys will see when we're filming on the couch. We have the AB Wood Science for Always Believe. It's a little uh, Think Happy Thoughts, like from Peter Pan. Another piece from our friends Aloe and Michael. It is actually a recreation, like a, a wood sign recreation of the coaster you get from Oga's Cantina for the Yub Nub drink, Ooh. which I thought was really, really cute. And it was so nice that they gave that to us. We do have a lot of Star Wars posters, which are, again, thanks to Brian. We have the original classic Star Wars poster, one of my favorite movie posters. Uh, and flanking it, we have the Force Awakens poster that I got to art direct. It's still a mind-blowing experience that I got to work on this poster and contribute to Star Wars, which is something I am such a passionate fan about. I, st I still get lost for words talking about that. Like, it's such an epic experience to get to work on that. And then for The Rise of Skywalker, I got to do this really epic finale poster with Paul Shipper. I did a lot of the design work and Paul did all the amazing illustration that just made it look very classic, like a classic Star Wars poster. Having these two posters flanking the original trilogy poster is my favorite part about our living room. Now we're done talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you. Yeah. I love that you're able to do that stuff. 
think somebody told me when I first met you. They're like, oh yeah, he did the Star Wars poster. And you're like, yeah, whatever. I don't know, whatever, who cares? <laughs> I, I think I liked more the fact that you, like, I liked your Han Solo cosplay so much. <laughs> That's what I was really impressed when I checked your Instagram. I was like, oh, he did the Star Wars poster, whatever. Did you see his cosplay though? <laughs> this is our dining table we almost never use. <laughs> we said when we moved in together, we were gonna have every single dinner here. Uh, we haven't kept up with that. Where do we usually have dinner? <laughs> On the couch. Where we can watch TV. The only time we really watch TV and catch up with Netflix and things is when we're eating dinners. So in case you didn't notice, obviously Brian and I have a, a style we enjoy and that's geeky and mid-century modern. So the other piece we knew we needed to invest in when we moved in together was a geeky china cabinet because we both knew we had like collectibles that we like to share and display. It's basically things from like events that we've done that kind of have a significance to us yeah. and sort of our relationship. Mm -hmm. There's some things that we haven't done together but are special to us. The top shelf of this cabinet is Hook and Peter Pan because we're all about magic and believing and playing and Peter Pan and Hook is one of those movies that really inspires that in us. So one of my favorite pieces in this shelf is the Peter Pan hook sword. It was a toy that I always wanted as a kid and I was able to get it as an adult from a collector. So the second shelf is our Solo shelf. It's really meaningful to us because we love the movie Solo, the Star Wars story. It's one of our favorite films. Ashley and I, in the beginning of our relationship, we made the costumes together. We made Han and Kira from that film. We spent uh, a month or so making those outfits together. And as a result of spending so much time together making those outfits, we got to go to the premiere. And that was such a magical experience. And it really kind of was the start of Always Believe in our relationship and playing and creating together. It was really funny because I was never part of the Rebel Legion or 501st. I just started cosplaying and I was like, I think if we make these costumes and we do them really well, we can go to the premiere. And then you were like, no, no, yeah. only people in the Rebel Legion and 501st can go to Star Wars premiere. Yeah, I was like, it's not gonna happen. It's, it's not gonna, gonna happen. happen. So I'm like, I bet you if we do a real good job, I think it's gonna happen. And it happened. Yeah. <laughs> I love this piece too. This was my first Star Wars blaster I had as a kid. Still makes the sounds. Something fun that we did as sort of a joke uh, is they were selling solo cups. We actually brought a red cup to the premiere and we got a bunch of the actors to sign it. So that was a lot of fun. This our wristbands for the opening weekend of going to Galaxy's Edge together, we kept those. I have my original VHS tapes that my dad gave to me when I was 10 for Christmas. I remember the entire day still of getting these Star Wars tapes, sitting downstairs and watching them for the first time and just being blown away about what I was seeing. That's where it all began for me, those tapes. This is my old Wacom pen that I used to design a couple of the Star Wars posters and Marvel posters, so it eventually broke because I used it so much. I just decided to keep it as like my little token. Ashley has her multi-pass for the fifth element. I have my Rocketeer action figure that I had as a kid. Just a fun couple little pieces. So just across the way is my office. But we decided, especially because I was working from home more, basically have my own little uh, work area set up, which is really nice. I filled it to the brim with all of my favorite little things. I just wanted to make it like as much of a happy space as possible. You know, everybody has their own space that's just for them, and this was mine. But this is where I am most of the day for work. Doing my BCBA supervision for my ABA clients from here for now, which it really stinks, but I try to make the most out of it. So if you guys are working from home, make sure you set aside a place you look forward to going and sitting at every day, as well as a place that's not in your bedroom. Yes. Um, so living room, if you have to make the living room work, here's a prime example of how we did it. This divider really helps out with that too. So then when I'm done with work here, I turn off all my lights, I turn off my the little fairy light so I know that work is done for the day. And then I can move out to this space and go, oh, okay, work's done, work is over there. Mm -hmm. And then this is just the living space. It helps you separate. If you're working from home, it helps you separate those two, those two moods of the day. That works. I love it. You did a good job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh no. Oops, they didn't see you go out there. Don't leave me out here. That oh. happens a lot. We end up blocking Goober out on the porch. He likes to go out on the porch, which is nice because he's an indoor cat, but he does not like when you close the door. Um, speaking of the porch, come on out. It's kind of dark right now, but I think we have some shots of the porch during the daytime to show you. This is our little little outdoor uh, escape. So one of the nice things about our patio space is we made it very private. Um, so we added these bamboo dividers. Uh, we also wanted this to be like really tropical feeling. Um, so we added some plants. 
uh, some nice chairs. These were some ones that I found actually for free in a garage because they were mid-century modern, so I grabbed them. Um, but they work well out here. It's sort of our escape to have this nice outdoor space. I love the lights when they come on at night. We also have this fun uh, tiki idol head that we got from our first tiki marketplace vlog that we did. Goober likes to hang out here too and just spy on people walking by. Yeah. He likes judging people at the pool. It's nice that we have an outdoor space while we're stuck inside. We have coffee out here, sometimes we have food out here, just relax. And I can't wait till the summertime to be out here a little bit more again. So well trained. So well trained. Cooper is so bored of us talking about our apartment right now. <laughs> He's just passed out on the ground. Eat dinner already. We forgot to talk about the most important part of the living room. What's that, Ashley? The TV. <laughs> So we love mid-century design, that 1950s period, sort of what Disneyland has. It was a really cool period of design. What we have here is a cool mid-century style credenza. It's a very basic one, very affordable, because a lot of them are super expensive. But we added these little accent pieces to it ourselves, these cool little starburst designs. Um, and credenzas are like a big thing that kind of symbolize that mid-century period. And I love sort of this wall of the Guardians poster exploding into the solo poster. Our experiences again of going to the solo premiere together when Ashley got to meet Amelia Clark. Ashley, what was it like to meet Amelia Clark at the oh solo no. premiere? I cried the entire time. I'm so <laughs> embarrassed. I'm like, I knew I was gonna meet her. I'm like, I'm gonna be cool. I wanna be her friend. You believed so hard that you were gonna meet Amelia Clark at that event, and you did. I did, but then I, I blew it by like, like I watched the videos again. And I'm so embarrassed because I'm like, oh, <laughs> like the entire time. <laughs> You look absolutely amazing. She was so sweet though. She gave me a hug. She said I looked amazing. Um, she signed our, our cup. She was so sweet and she smelled like flowers. Brian and I have collected a lot of memories together, um, but this was one of our first and favorite memories. So we have a lot of we have a lot of homages to Solo: a Star Wars Story. And you, you did you talk about that you got to work on another poster for me, a Disneyland exclusive? We literally found out the day before we were going to the Solo premiere that one of my designs I submitted months before was actually used as like a Disneyland exclusive Solo giveaway, and I was able to get one. Luckily, shipped overnight, and we brought it to the premiere and got that signed by a bunch of the actors too, which was super. cool. So again, the solo film has a lot of meaning to us. It was something that was very personal to me career-wise, and it was something very personal relationship-wise. And the fact that Ashley got to meet Amelia, I'm gonna meet Amelia, we're gonna go to the solo premiere. <laughs> I didn't believe any of that was gonna happen. The solo film really helped solidify that idea of always believe and that believing in what you want to happen in life. And it can happen if you just really focus on that goal. Crazy amazing things like that can happen that you never thought you'd get to do. Yeah. Part of it is we also have friends to thank for getting us in that. Yes, movie. thank you, Bernie, for getting us into the solo premiere. Yeah. Um, so let's go to your office. So one of my favorite spots in the office is my chair. This is sort of my creative thinking chair. I always wanted to have a spot where I could sit down, I could draw, I could read. I have a really cool bookshelf right over here that I can grab comic books off, a bunch of my art books that I love, and just a bunch of the cool collectibles that we've assembled. I kind of feel like this is my Han Solo chair, this is my captain's chair, even the the rug on the ground kind of looks like light speed, so to me this is my spot where I can sit and have ideas explode out of me. Woo! My favorite time in the morning is to edit sitting here in this chair. We're just talking about our favorite time in the morning is sitting together and having coffee. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> you know, it's not really your favorite time? I, What's sitting my, and having coffee with me? It is my favorite time, Ashley. What are you talking about? I mean, technically, you're spending time with me because you're editing yeah, my face. Yeah. I also have a standing desk, but I usually just kind of work on this laptop now. Open up the laptop, I can look outside when it's nice and sunny out and just kind of feel like I'm outdoors. A lot of you guys, our flight crew, are always asking, what collectibles do you guys have? Show us your collectibles. We don't really have a ton of collectibles in the sense of toys. We have a few pieces that I really love, like this is one of my first lightsabers, Empire Strikes Back saber. This is my Anakin lightsaber that I carried in the Rose Parade in 2007 when I 
marked as Anakin Skywalker for Lucasfilm. That is also one of the coolest things I've ever done in my entire life was meeting George as Anakin Skywalker. Some of our Han Solo blasters, Ashley's Princess Leia blasters. We have our goggles from our opening weekend of going to Galaxy's Edge together. Lots of comic books, DC, Marvel, Star Wars. Really fun bookshelf, really fun mid-century boomerang style bookshelf. We try to take anything from this shelf. We got a uh, Boba Fett over here keeping guard. Watch out, there's a cat guarding the door. It's a large panther. In order to get through, you must pay the gatekeeper with a belly rub. Can I, can I get through, gatekeeper? Can I get through? <laughs> We've gotten past the beast. Come this way. <laughs> come, come. Oh, careful. I have, I have put him into a deep slumber. He should be out for another hour. <laughs> this is our bedroom. Well done. This is still our work in progress. Want to paint the room. We finally got around after two years of living together to um, update the furniture. Where do we get these living spaces? Yeah. So these are just, you know, we're trying to make everything a little bit more mid-century modern. So these were some new dressers that we got. So this is Brian's dresser. This is my dresser. So you can tell, like, this is his side of the bed. This is my side of the bed. I'm just one of those people that's like, this is yours and this yes. is mine. Yes. But I'm surrounded by yours because this side of the room is also yours. Very much. Just pretend there's like a, a pathway that just like goes like, that's, that's my line. <laughs> this is my line. It squiggles. We wanted to do like greens and blues and golds, just very like kind of tropically. But this was another um, poster that you picked out for me when we moved in together was the Fifth Element poster, which is one of my top five favorite non-Star Wars movies. You picked this one for the bedroom because he felt like she was like jumping into bed. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> was it grateful? It was perfect. Did I look like the Supreme Being? Yeah, I don't think Corbin Dallas caught you, but this bed <laughs> is close enough. I think the Falcon caught you. I think I always try and find it, but I'm pretty sure this is Corbin Dallas coming around the corner. That and looks like his cab too. The bedroom space is a, is a work in progress still. We just got this furniture before the quarantine happened, so we're really happy that we have these nice pieces. We were just of. in the middle of like making the bedroom much nicer. Yeah, we were gonna buy some new lamps because mid-century has a lot of really big, crazy lamps. Hopefully once this is all settled, we can finish decorating the bedroom and really make it into the space we want it to be. We have a New Hope poster. This poster is actually my first memory of Star Wars was seeing this shot somehow when I was like four years old. And then when I saw the movie when I was 10 on those tapes, I was like, oh my gosh, this was Star Wars. This was the thing that was in my head all the time. I love having this poster remind me of the first memory I have of Star Wars. I think it's really nice. But we wanted like the pinks and the, the blues and the reds to go with my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah. Suicide Squad Harley Quinn was my first cosplay. So we bought this to honor that. Sort of like honors you like breaking free. And yeah. Just like letting go. Cause she's almost like breaking out in the actual image a little right. bit. Right. And then to go with that, this was the bat that I used for my first uh, Harley Quinn cosplay. It's a real bat. And you made that bat. I did. So I, um, I added this uh, cover on there. It's like plastic. You tell it's coming off. It's been, she's been well loved. Yeah. Um, but this was just like a plastic printout that you put on top. I actually hand wrote her whole creepy little poem. Um, a lot of it's gotten kind of worn out, but black and blue and red font and different cursive writing. I actually wrote the whole thing as I watched Suicide Squad. And the time it took me to write this whole thing, the movie had started and ended. Jeez. Yeah. This is the fun little prop. I'll always have it. Those things are special to me. This is my closet. I'm a very, very organized person. I love organizing. So it was really important to me moving in with um, Brian that I have my own space <laughs> that yeah. I can control. This is just dresses and skirts over here, or blouses and jackets. Um, I've got a lot of posu boots up here. I keep my tall ones. Other posu boots are here. I just have little pieces here and there. I got my helmet that you got me for Christmas. Um, another Padme headpiece from Galaxy's Edge. So. I just kind of make this part the display mm -hmm. because I like to take selfies in front of the mirror across. I don't know. I never ever thought I would ever have a walk-in closet, let alone enough clothes to fill a walk-in closet mm. ever in my life. I will tell you guys like 90% of my wardrobe is like secondhand thrift store pieces. So it was a lot easier to fill this up. <laughs> this hallway leads to the bathroom, but I'm trying to plan on making it like a, a kind of like a personalized vanity space. And then maybe putting like a vanity, a table over here. For now we have some more poster space. And uh, we've got our pin board. 
That was smart. You were like, let's hang our pins up because they're just sitting on our dressers right now. I know, and it's easier. So if you, you know, put your jacket on for the day, you're like, mm, which pin, which flare do I want to add? It's just easier on display like this. So this is our bathroom. Come on in. <laughs> um, it's it's a bathroom. It's a little. It has a little bit of Star Wars elements to it. Um, again, like this is just our space. You know. Yeah. Uh, we didn't do anything crazy with it quite yet. Another another place in our apartment we were kind of waiting to really invest a lot of time and energy into. But I love our Star Wars shower curtain and our matching um, bath rug. And what did you notice about what did you notice about the shower curtain? Oh yeah. So one day when I was sitting here thinking, I was sitting here going, Oh yeah, I didn't realize that. But in the design of the shower curtain, the negative space is a star destroyer here on the curtain. Cooper's, Cooper's thinking spot is right next to our thinking spot. Yeah. And I kid you not, the second I sit down to TT, he comes and joins me in his, in his igloo. Yeah. And he like pops his little head out. Like he sticks his head out while he's going to the bathroom. I like look at him and like he looks at me. I, I've been here sometimes and then I usually look down and he's there pooping. Oh, I should go poop too. Yeah, it's like, oh, we're doing this together right now. We both make eye contact like, well, this is awkward. We're both going to the bathroom at the same time. No, but he does it on purpose. Yeah. And through there, comes back out to the entryway. So in the mid-century modern tradition, we're going to have you guys join us for a cocktail before you leave. Welcome to our tiki bar. Ashley and I really didn't understand what tiki was, or at least I didn't know what tiki was until we went to Trader Sam's together and fell in love with the fun of the tiki world. Tiki bar is a lot of fun. It's just another space to kind of collect and put a bunch of the fun things we've gotten from Disneyland and different trips that we're doing together, like Golden Idol from our TikTok video we did recently with the toilet paper. Bunch of fun tiki cups from Geeky Tiki's. Our sporks are here hanging out. Yeah, a lot of our style is very mid-century inspired, which also involves tiki because the tiki community kind of blossomed during the mid-century period for that escapism. Everybody wanted to have fun and party, which is why Disneyland has so much tiki style, like Trader Sam's, the Enchanted Tiki Room. All of Adventureland is basically tiki inspired because Disney loved that stuff. Yeah, pretty much this is just where we collect some, anything that's kind of Star Wars and tiki inspired. We just, it's just kind of like a hodgepodge of our favorite things, you know, some like stickers and things that we've gotten from fans we keep over here. All of the coasters from you know, every place that we've been to, which is like obviously mostly Ogres. <laughs> <laughs> Little hidden Mickey in the bar right back here. <laughs> Some thermal detonators. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, it's a Coke. <laughs> hey, it's going all over the floor. <laughs> Two ounces of pineapple juice, one ounce of fresh orange juice. One ounce of coconut cream. Ew. <laughs> it's coconut! Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't forget the rum. No. The most important part is for a really good tiki drink is Pusser's rum, which is the original rum for the painkiller, which is what we're making right now. So two ounces of rum. You seal that up. You put on your lay and you shake away. This means fun when you hear the sound. We got a little nutmeg. We'll stick an orange in there, a fresh orange. What we have here is a painkiller drink. One of my favorite tiki drinks. Uh, the Tiki 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 Rum at Trader Sam's. Well, nobody can get one like this because it's an always believe. So thanks again, flight crew, for coming to our apartment, seeing where we live. This is it. This is our other happiest place on earth. We're really lucky that we were, we took the time to um, really decorate and make it a space that we really, really love and enjoy. More fun soon, guys. Watch some of our other vlogs if you haven't yet. Like and subscribe to this video. Give us a thumbs up if you had fun watching this video today. It means a lot to us. Stay healthy so we can go to Disneyland again together. Yes. <laughs> Bye, guys. Get out. We're going to drink our drink now. Bye. Bye.